Hello, Las Vegas, and welcome to the Conservative American with Chris Garcia. Once again, I am here from 1 to 1.30 Pacific Time. If you'd like to call in and join in on the show and ask me anything you'd like to ask me, the number is 782-983-0711, and you can talk to me directly. And one of our sponsors, again, is Mel Byron May. And for $10 a month and a $10 deposit, you can come in and see the CM our great uh, business manager here, and she can get you started. You can have a wonderful downtown address for $10 a month. And the number there is 702-626-0716. Once again, the number is 626-0716, 702 area code. And for $10 a month and a $10 deposit, you can have a wonderful downtown Las Vegas address. It's a beautiful day here in Las Vegas, 61 degrees, and this fabulous city is the greatest city on earth, and uh, it's just a beautiful day, but it gets a little chilly here at night. It's going to be in the 30s and 40s this week, so make sure that you bundle up if you're coming into town and protect your pets and your plants. With that, another beautiful day to be in a conservative in America, and you know, Donald Trump still hasn't made his decision yet on who he's going to make as Secretary of State. I hope he takes as long as he can uh, to make this decision. It's a big decision. Um, he's going to be criticized, I believe, in any way with anything that he does. But I hope he makes the best decision for the country. And, uh, you know, what is with these recounts today? You know, <laughs> they cannot accept the fact that they lost the election. Uh, they want to do a recount. It's just unbelievable. Today, certified Michigan, uh, he's up to 306 electoral votes to 222 for Hillary Clinton. And uh, when the others come in, I think it was an electoral college landslide. They keep trying to say that it's not a mandate, but I, I think it's a mandate. Now they want to go by the popular vote. They don't want to go by the electoral college vote anymore because they lost the election. Just unbelievable. But Michigan was certified. Uh, he won Michigan and, and their electoral college votes. And he's up to 306 electoral college votes. And what they're talking about, Hillary Clinton possibly looking at 320 to 330 electoral college votes for Hillary Clinton. It's going to turn out to be totally the opposite. Maybe 320 electoral college votes for Donald Trump. Isn't that something? And then they, they lectured us on how we were going to deal was such an overwhelming loss. The American people were going to speak and that they were going to elect Hillary Clinton. How did that work out? That didn't happen. And now they are, you know, throwing sour grapes. They want these states to be recounted. They don't believe the election that, you know, that he, she lost the election. And, you know, they keep trying to hide behind this third party candidate or they keep trying to me hide behind other people. Uh, as if they're behind this. Make no mistake about it. Hillary and, and, and Bill Clinton are behind this recount. They are just totally devastated. They cannot move on with the idea that they lost this election. They just cannot deal with it. Yeah. And it's just amazing. I mean, she should be used to losing because she lost the last election to Barack Obama. So how you how do you do that? How do you lose to a first-time senator? I mean, Donald Trump's smarter than Barack Obama, so she should be used to losing. And... Uh, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and you just accept it and you move on. And, uh, you know, she's, her family stole enough millions of dollars through the Clinton Foundation. They certainly can buy a yacht and sell off or live in their mansion in upstate New York, and they will be absolutely fine. They don't, they don't need to get into politics no more. Chelsea don't get into politics anymore. And the Clintons just go away. Enjoy the millions that you stole from all over the world. Uh, into the Clinton Foundation and just move on with it. We don't need any more recounts in any more states. I mean, you know, uh, this makes Al Gore look good. I thought Al Gore was a sore loser, but he just accepted Florida and moved on with his life. And uh, that's what Hillary Clinton needs to do. She needs to just accept the election. She lost fair and square. She lost to a man that had never held political office. The American people have spoken move on with your life and do something else. There are a lot of other things that you can do, but what you won't be is president of the United States. That's not going to happen. And, and it would never happen. The people are never going to accept a liar. They're never going to accept somebody that, you know, is, is putting our country in danger, somebody that 
sixty something thousand emails were deleted uh, using uh, uh, different methods, bleach and other things, to to get these emails deleted from your tablets and your phones and all your gadgets that you use. Uh, the American people are not going to believe you when they when you lied about being guys and you just lied. You and your husband through history have lied over and over and over again to the American people, and they got tired of it. And they need a straight shooter in office. They need somebody who's going to come in and drain the swamp. And somebody who's going to be honest to the American people. So that's why, if you, if you didn't understand, if you can't understand, that's why the people voted for Donald Trump. And I believe that he's going to be an excellent president. And they're going to vote for him again. So if you didn't understand why you lost the election, that's why you lost the election. And you need to get over it. The people of Michigan have spoken. The people of Wisconsin have spoken. The people of Pennsylvania have spoken. And your blue wall that you thought that you had total control of, you didn't. You lost the election. And you need to get over it. Um, it's, it's just amazing. And, you know, it looks like the protests are dying down a little bit across the country. The kids need to go back to school. Their parents are paying good money. A lot of them have gotten financial aid from us. Uh, the taxpayers that are paying for these kids to go to school, and you need to go to school and uh, take your test and, and learn and become something. And uh, instead of protesting over something that you don't even know what you're protesting about, you couldn't vote anyway. So, you know, they need to get over it. They lost the election. And let's get on with making America great again and governing this country and picking people that are going to uh, be in the best position to help this country go forward because that's what Donald Trump is trying to do. No, we're not looking backwards. We're trying to go forwards. We need to replace Obamacare. We need to put Supreme Court justices in there that have conservative views and are going to uphold, you know, the conservative uh, 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 view of the Supreme Court and are going to, uh, you know, continue to uh, serve this country well. You know, these are uh, basically lifetime appointments. So we need people that are going to be in there and are going to uphold the rights of this country, this a conservative Christian country, as far as I'm concerned, and it's just terrifying when you get presidents, socialist presidents like Barack Obama, and left wing extremists like Hillary Clinton in office. You can do so much damage to this country. You could set it back 30, 40, 50 years if they were allowed to put Supreme Court nominees up. Uh, we could be set back in this country for years, and uh, you know we can have our gun rights taken away from us and so many other things. I think that, um, you know, abortion rights are too loose right now. And I agree with Donald Trump about that. I, I think that there be, should be some sort of punishment or some sort of something when it comes to abortion. These are lies. These are human lies. How dare her say that you can rip a baby out of the womb, you know, right before it's born and kill it. And that, you know, you have the right to do that. I found that in the debate. When I watched the debate coverage after the debate for CNN and MSNBC and even Fox to some extent to not adamantly say how disgusting that is. These late term abortions is disgusting. These are human beings. How would you advise somebody to come into your mother's womb and whip ripped you out a week or two before you was born? You wouldn't be here. You would have never got the chance to be the person that you grown to be and thank God for the mothers out there that carried their babies full term. I think they don't get enough respect and uh, uh, brought these people into the world. Um, how dare these people? Um, hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting calls right now. I'm on the air. Uh, so, uh, you know, people are calling in all over the country. People, Some people agree with me. Some people don't agree with me. But, uh, you know, that that's the wonderful thing about it. And, uh, you know, we get interesting calls all day long. And uh, people want to be a part of the show. You can call in Pacific Time, 702-983-0711. You can call directly to me. I'll have my Twitter page up soon. And you can text me. Um, and it's just... Uh, it's, it's wonderful uh, what's going on right now. And uh, the show is, it, you know, we're in a wonderful downtown facility here in, in the middle of Las Vegas amongst lawyers. And uh, it's just a wonderful experience. And Delano Ross has given me this opportunity to uh, 
have my own show and it's just such a blessing. And uh, we're doing so many big things here. We have so many guests that are coming up. Um, uh, so many big things are, are, are going on. Uh, it's just a wonderful thing. But it's just a wonderful thing, and it's, it's so much, so much going on. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing to see. Uh, you know, but you know they need to get over the election results, and uh, it's just unbelievable that uh, these people will not get over the election results. They lost the election fair and square. It's not like he won these states by 100 votes or 200 votes or 500 votes. He won one state by 70,000, I believe it was Pennsylvania, by 38,000 in Wisconsin, and by 12,000 in Michigan. You know, it wasn't, it's not that many ballots that, you know, uh, uh, were miscounted. It's not that many, it's not that many ballots that, that are wrong. Um, you know, it's just unbelievable to me that uh, these people don't uh, want to accept the election results. It's just incredible, and uh, you know they need to get on with their lives and get on with things so that we can continue to um, govern our country and, and, and move on in the right direction. Uh, it's just an unbelievable thing. Uh, you know, I can't believe that that they're spending uh, their money, taxpayer money, to do these recounts. Uh, there's just no way in the world that uh, uh, these. Uh, these people are, uh, are going to lose the state. They're not, they're not enough recount votes that are going to change what's going on. I think it's ridiculous. And uh, there just aren't enough recount votes that are going to make a difference. And uh, they need to just move on. Having said that, uh, I want to send my prayers out to the people of the Ohio State University. Um, there was a stabbing today on campus. Um, and I feel horrible about that. Uh, I believe 10 people were stabbed before the police officer shot and took out, uh, took, shot the uh, perpetrator three times. He attacked them first with his car, and uh, then he attacked them with a butcher knife, and I believe he stabbed 10 people were critical before a police officer that was there within a minute uh, shot and killed him three times. So thankfully, there was a police officer on duty, and uh, there was a police officer on duty, and uh, thankfully, they were able to take them out without any more loss of lives than those people that were stabbed. Ten people at the Ohio State University were stabbed today, and just uh, God bless that there was a police officer that was there on the scene within a minute and was able to take out the person that had the knife and was stabbing the students at the Ohio State University. God bless that police officer. And that's another thing that I always talk about with these groups. I always talk about uh, Black Lives Matters and these other groups that are so anti-police officer. But when you need a police officer, who is there to show up and probably save countless lives today at the Ohio State University? So thank God for that police officer. Uh, these people put their lives on the line every single day uh, for all of us and never know when they're going to come home to their families or not. So God bless them. And if it wasn't for them, uh, our society would be in chaos. Those are the firefighters all around the country are the first responders. And without them, uh, we would be safe or we wouldn't be in the situation that we are. And we need to back behind them, and, but we also need to hold them accountable, like in any job that you're at. I don't care if you work at a McDonald's or if you're a police officer or what you are. I believe you should be held accountable, and, but we should also allow the justice system to do their job, and we should be so quick to jump on the fact that it is either a racial shooting or it's racially biased or, you know, it, it, it's something like that, because a lot of times these police officers have split the sec seconds to make life decisions on whether they're going to see their family or not. It's, it's one thing to sit in the background and judge people. It's another thing to put that uniform, put that badge on, and become a target. And not only are you a target yourself, and that's been seen all over the country, how many police officers have been set up lately and shot when they get to a certain place. 
But I grew, I grew up in the south side of Chicago, and I used to see that all the time, police officers. They would be first responders in a 911 phone call, only to get there and find out that it's a setup. And that's beginning to happen all over the country. So not only are you a target yourself when you put on that uniform, but you then have to protect people. And uh, I don't think enough credit is given to police officers for what they do and putting their lives at stake for the American people. I think that that's so very important. And I don't think they're given enough credit for what they do. So uh, once again, just thank you for that police officer. And he probably saved uh, people's lives um, today at the Ohio State University. And just thank God for that. Um, so uh, once again today, it's 60 degrees in Las Vegas. We're going to have a low of 39 degrees. And uh, it's going to get cold here at night. So um, please bundle up when you're out there and protect your plants, protect your pets and your animals. And uh, it gets cold here in the desert at night. And once again, if you'd like to call in live on the show, 702 983 That is 702-983-0711. And you can call in and you can talk to us directly. Chris Garcia, the conservative American, 1 to 1.30 Pacific time. So make sure when you call in that number, you're calling in 1 to 1.30 Pacific time. And I can talk to you live on the air. And, of course, you can Google me and you can watch Chris Garcia, the conservative American. I'm also the co-host on Face the Tribune with Alondra Lalas from 12 to 1 Pacific time. And you can call in on either one of those shows. 702-983-0711. And you can talk to Rolando or myself live on the air. We love to talk to people of all different views and party affiliations. And we will love we love to have a good debate. And we have a lot of great guests coming on on the next month. So but make sure if you want to call in at a specific time. 12 to 1, face the tribune at 1 to 1.30, the conservative America with Rolando Lalas. And uh, it's a beautiful day out here. It's a beautiful day to be an American. And it's a beautiful day. And we have uh, so many exciting things. I believe I think our country is headed in the right direction. Uh, I think the president-elect Donald Trump uh, is going to use his business and negotiating skills to bring companies back to our country and to bring jobs back to our country. And I, don't, I think that if you try and take your company or take your jobs, overseas or to Mexico, I think that he's going to tax you if you try to sell products back to the American people. He's not going to allow you to give the double finger to the American people. He's not going to allow you to take jobs away from our country, turn around, sell those products back to our country at an inflated price. You know, he's not going to, you give us the finger once and he's going to give you the finger and he's going to tax you when you try and sell uh, those uh, uh, uh products back, whether they be steel or whether they be coal or whether they be uh, uh, carrier air conditions or whatever it is, cars, whatever it is that you took uh, to another country because you felt like you could make an extra dollar overseas. Uh, I believe that he is going to tax you, tariff you, so you will have incentives to stay in this country and hire American people. And I think that that's very important. Um, I think that uh, it's, it's a wonderful uh, uh, day, you know, to, to have a president like that who cares about the American people and puts the American people first. And I think that that's what needs to happen. I think too long we've been sold out by too many politicians that uh, put their pockets first and are cutting bad trade deals like NAFTA and other deals, uh, TCP and other deals that they are making uh, right now. And, and these deals favor uh, sending businesses overseas and they favor China, they favor Mexico. They favor Korea, they favor Japan, they favor uh, India. They don't favor the United States. And I believe we finally have a president that will come into office and who will put the American worker first. Um, I've always said that it's, it's very weird that you have a guy that's a billionaire and uh, lives in Trump Towers in a penthouse, a two-story story penthouse, and he really doesn't have to ever come down from that and deal with the American people. This guy has made it. He didn't have to run for president. He didn't have to put himself on national TV and allow himself to be 
uh, talked about by people and, and put down by people. He could have just stayed doing what he was doing. He has a very successful business all over the world. He had a very successful number one show in The Apprentice. He didn't have to do this. So, you know, when people say, well, all politicians are greedy and they're doing it for themselves, I say, Donald Trump isn't because he's accepting a $400,000 job and he makes billions of dollars every year. So uh, he showed it by putting up his own money and not taking in large campaign contributions from firms and from countries and from other companies. He self-financed his own election. He spent his money wisely in certain states. He went back and visited other states like Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania where people were saying, why are you doing that? There's no way you're going to win those states. Well, he won all three of those states. So in the last few weeks of the election, when he went back to those states, once again, he was proving people wrong. And he was proving how intelligent he is and how he doesn't believe what people say. He makes up his own mind. And I think that he felt that he would be doing those people a disservice by talking to them and not going to visit them. Those were the people that lost their jobs, the people in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Indiana. He won every one of those states, North Carolina. Those are the people, West Virginia. Those are the people that have been losing their jobs over the last few decades through these bad trade deals. And I think Donald Trump felt like he would be doing the American people a disservice if you just come on and you do a spot or you do a commercial or you do an advertising, but you don't go talk to the people. And I think it meant a lot. I think people felt personally touched when this man is a billionaire who doesn't have to care about the average Joe, takes a bus ride in the Flint, Michigan, or takes a bus ride in the Madison, Wisconsin. You know, when, when you go to these small towns in Kentucky and these, where these people have been laid off, it's something to see this person come and talk to you directly and say, I'm not going to forget you, the forgotten man or woman. I'm not going to forget you. I, I'm going to bring these jobs back. And the people that left you and left you in these towns and left you without jobs, I'm going to punish those people. And I'm going to tax them. And I'm going to give people that want to put you, the American people, back to work. I'm going to lower their taxes. I'm going to lower their health care premiums. I'm going to allow them to hire people. And I'm going to bring these country companies and these jobs back to the American people. And I think that that meant a lot to the American people to see him go to these towns and talk to the American people directly. I think that that meant a lot. And I think that that's a good thing. I think that uh, uh, that's why he won those states. That's why some of those counties that voted for Obama were flipped. And uh, he won a lot of those counties. And I think that, I'm going to say it again, I think when he talked to the African-American and Latino communities directly, and he was insulted for doing that. They said, well, why didn't he uh, go and talk to these people directly? Well, he did go talk to a lot of those people directly. But there were also a lot of organizations and a lot of churches that did not invite him. Let's face it, it's a two-way street. For you to show up, you have to be invited. And there were a lot of people in the African-American community that would not reach out to Donald Trump. And, but he still, even though he know he was being prejudiced against, and they were inviting Hillary to come to these places and not him, he still, every single day for like a month straight, you know, the general election after you win the primaries is only three months long. And I can remember for a month, month and a half straight, every single campaign stop. He didn't have to talk to white America. He didn't have to talk to middle class America about the plight of the African American in the inner city. He already was going to win those votes. Those people that were going to vote for him when he made those stops in Oklahoma and Alabama and Mississippi, he was in those states talking about helping out the African American in the inner city of Chicago, in New York, in LA. He didn't have to do that. And so while he was getting criticized for doing that, I couldn't understand it because you know what? I didn't even hear Hillary Clinton talking about the, the plight of the African American in the inner city, in the ghetto. I didn't hear her talking about what she was going to do for Latinos. They, it was just a foregone conclusion in their minds that they were going to get those votes. And that's what Donald Trump was talking about. He said, every four years they come to you and they ask you for your vote. And they say, I'll see you in four years. And they do absolutely nothing. And Donald Trump was saying, give me a chance. Because if you give me a chance, I'll actually put you back to work, not welfare. I actually will give you a job opportunity, you know, not a food stamp card. Because four years from now, you're just going to be in the same situation. He's about giving you opportunity. 
And, and that's what he stands for. He's about giving you a good job where you can have pride in what you do and who you are and you can take care of and support your family instead of sitting there waiting for the government to help you because the government is not going to do anything. And you can ask those people in New Orleans, you can ask those people during Hurricane Katrina what the government did. They had a Democratic mayor and Ray Nagin, took, all he did was steal during Hurricane Katrina before, during, and after. That's all he did was take from the people of New Orleans, his people, you know, these people don't care. And uh, the government did nothing for those people. They left those people down there to starve. They left those people down there in the Superdome in deplorable situations. And that's because those people weren't self-sufficient. The people that were self-sufficient got the hell out of New Orleans. But the people that were had to stay there and wait for the federal government to take care of them. And let me tell you, there'll be another Katrina. There'll be another earthquake. There'll be another hurricane. And those people will find themselves once again because... Obama and Clinton have made people dependent upon the federal government to take care of them. When that happens again, they won't be self-sufficient and they won't be able to take care of themselves. So that's what Donald Trump, he believes in being self-sufficient. He believes in having a working wage, a good job, putting America first. You can call him a nationalist or call him whatever you want to call him. I call him the next president of the United States. And I'm very proud to do that. With that, I'm going to end my show today. Uh, all of you liberals out there, get over it. She lost. If you want to recount every state, guess what? She'll lose again. So get over it. And uh, Donald Trump is going to be our next president. We got about six weeks to, uh, to go, before six, seven weeks to go. And uh, Godspeed to him. And uh, take your time and fill your cabinet. And uh, for the best of the American people, whether those people agree with you, disagree with you or not, I know you make the best decision for the American people. Once again, I'm so blessed to be here, sitting here, having this opportunity. Uh, the great Rolando Barras has entrusted me to have a show after his legendary Face the Tribune. That's from 12 to 1 o'clock Pacific time. And then I come on from 1 to 1.30, sometimes 2 o'clock time committee Pacific time. And you can call in live from 12 to 1.30, 702-980-711. And you can talk to Rolando or myself. Thank you so much for my great producer, CN, today. Always produces a fabulous show. Works very hard to get these shows out. We're doing big things here. And I love you. God bless America. God bless uh, Donald Trump. God bless our troops. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day.